We're going to take a look in this video at solving some simple equations. Equations are things that have an equal sign. And whatever is on the left-hand side of the equal sign has to equal whatever is on the right-hand side of the equal sign. And oftentimes when we're solving equations, we're solving for a variable. And the variable, the variable is just an unknown. We're trying to figure out what that variable equals. And so mostly in mathematics, we use a variable that is x. Now, don't confuse the x with times. In this video, I'll make my x is pretty big and my times is really small. So we're going to be asked what value of x will make the left-hand side of the equation equal to the right-hand side. And the good thing here is that we can check each of our answers by plugging our answer back in to our original question. So let's take a look at a really simple equation like 2x is equal to 8. If we have an equation like 2x equals 8, then we have to follow very simple rules when it comes to equation solving. Well, we can see here, we're going to try to find what the value of this variable x is. The main rule with equations is, whatever you do to the left-hand side of the equation, you have to do the same to the right-hand side of the equation. If you do the same to the left as you do to the right, then you don't change the value of the equation. So always do the same to the left and the right. And the second thing that we have to remember here is that we always do the opposite operation. In order to move something from one side of the equation to the other, we always do the opposite operation. And I'm going to explain that with this first example. In this first example, we really have here 2 times x, so 2 times what number, will give us 8. And you can probably surmise that 2 times 4 will be 8. And the value of x in this equation is going to be 4. But here's how we do it. We look right here between the number and the variable, and we see a multiplication sign. Remember, we always want to do the opposite operation. So if the sign says multiply, in order to get rid of the 2, because we need to get rid of the 2 in order to get this x all by itself, we need to have in the end x equals something. And so if we have 2 times x, how we get rid of the 2 is by dividing by 2. So if I divide the left-hand side of this equation by 2, I must divide the right-hand side of this equation by 2 as well. And now, on the left-hand side, all of the signs, well, they're multiplied. And because they're multiplied, we can cancel top to bottom and get rid of the 2. And now you see the only thing that we're left with on the left-hand side of this equation is the x. And now we perform the operation on the right-hand side of the equation, and 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. Now, in this case, x does equal 4. We can always plug, if we had 2 times x is equal to 8, and we said that x was going to be equal to 4. So, 2 times 4 equals 8, and what is 2 times 4 on the left-hand side here is 8, and so 8 is equal to 8, and so we're really able to check our answer to see that our value of x is correct. If we take a look at a question that is perhaps one step more difficult, we have 3 plus 2x is equal to 9. And normally when we have... Uh, there's a multiplication sign in the middle here. Normally, we don't write that multiplication sign. If it's 2 times a variable, we normally just write 2x. But really, it means 2 times x. Well, now you see we have to get the x all by itself. 
Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to get rid of this 3. We always do the multiplication part around the variable last, and we always do the added and subtracted terms first. So you see, we have to get rid of this 3. There's no sign in front of this 3, and if there's no sign in front of the 3, then really it's a plus 3. So what's the opposite operation of addition? The opposite operation of addition is subtraction. So in order to get rid of the 3, to move the 3 from the left-hand side over to the right-hand side, we are going to subtract 3. And so if we subtract 3 from the left-hand side of this equation, we have to subtract 3 from the right-hand side of this equation. And I'm going to write an extra step here that once you get familiar with equations, you probably won't have to do. But now I'm going to incorporate the two negative 3s that I've just drawn here. So I had plus 3 minus 3, that's this one, plus 2 times x is equal to 9 minus 3. And 3 plus 3 minus 3, these cancel, and that was our goal, right? We wanted to get rid of that 3. And so now on the left-hand side here, we have 2 times x is equal to, and 9 minus 3 is 6. And now we have a situation that's very similar to the first question, and that is we have a number times a variable equals another number. And so now we look right here, and the operation here is multiplication. So 2 times x, in order to get rid of the 2, we want to do the opposite operation. And because it says 2 times x, we want to then divide by 2. If I divide by 2 on the left, I must divide by 2 on the right. And that gets rid of those 2s. And 6 divided by 2 is 3, so I'm left here with x is equal to 3. Now, let's go right back to my original question, and let's just look at the left-hand side. And the left-hand side was 3 plus 2 times x. Well, we know x is equal to 3. That's the answer we got. So if we know x equals 3, we can put 3 in place of this x. And now 3 plus 2 times 3, we follow our order of operations, and we do the 2 times 3 first which is 6, and now we have 3 plus 6, which is equal to 9. And that, indeed, is equal to the right-hand side of our original equation. And so if we take a look now here at one final example, getting yet a little bit more complicated, we have 3 times x minus 4 equals x plus 12. So now we have x's on both sides of the equation, right? And this is just 1 times x. So now we have x's on both sides of the equation. And we get rid of the x's the same as we get rid of the numbers. But let's get rid of the numbers first. On the left-hand side here, we see a minus 4. So I'm going to move the minus 4 to the right-hand side of the equation by adding 4 to both sides. And you can see on the left-hand side here, I now have 3 times x minus 4 plus 4 equals 1 times x plus 12 plus 4. That plus 4 is the same as that one, and this plus 4 is right there. And you can see right here we've accomplished our goal of getting rid of the 4s. And so, so to simplify our left-hand side now, we have 3 times x is equal to 1 times x, and 12 plus 4 is equal to 16. Well, now we have the x's that we all have to get on one side. Usually we want to collect the x's on the left and the numbers on the right. It doesn't really matter whether you read an equation x equals 2 
or 2 equals x. That's the whole thing of an equation. It doesn't really matter which way you read it, left to right or right to left. But in any event, we need to get our x's together so that we can say x equals. And you can see here, we've got a positive x on the left, on the right hand side. And so now, in order to get rid of that x, there's really a positive sign there. We generally speaking don't write that. But in order to get rid of a positive x, we want to subtract x. Just like getting rid of a positive 3, we want to subtract 3. So I'm going to subtract x from each side of this equation in order to move this x and put it with the other x's on the left-hand side. And so I'm going to stop writing this multiplication sign between the number and the variable, because usually we don't do that in mathematics. And so now we'll get 3x minus x is equal to... 1x minus x, the red x's are the same, here to here and here to here, plus 16. And you see here, x subtract x is 0, the same as 4, negative 4 plus 4 was equal to 0 there. And so now 3x minus 1x we have three x's, we take one x away, we're left with two x's. And on the right hand side here, these x's cancelled out, and we were left with 16. And now we're in the same situation as we were in the very first example, where here we really have two times x. So to get rid of the two from the left hand side, we divide by two, and we must do the same to the right hand side. These twos cancel, and we're left with x is equal to 16 divided by 2, which is 8. And we could go back and plug 8 in for x and make sure that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And you should go and do that just to verify that x does equal 8. Indeed, that is the correct answer. So remember, when you're solving equations, when you're solving equations, you want to try to get the x's all on one side and all of the numbers on the other side. In order to move things from left to right or right to left, from one side of the equation to the other, you always want to perform the opposite operation and do the same thing to both sides, whether it is adding 4 or dividing by 2 Whatever we do to the left-hand side of the equation, 